what's up guys, it's Nate here with 7 Round Aquatics bringing you all yet another Episto of the Week video. So I've got my laptop sitting here in front of me. I did jot down a couple notes on what I want to be talking about today. Uh, so if you see me looking down, uh, that's what I'm doing. Um, also, if I look a little rough, I apologize. I had just had a really long day at work. We had a huge shipment of fish come in um, and it's about midnight right now. Uh, the store closes at 9, so I spent the past three hours just unloading fish, which was fun. Um, but before we begin, I'd like to let you all know that the Epistle of the Week video series is going to be coming out every Sunday um, to kind of kick off the general feel for the week. Um, and we'll be looking at Epistos that I own first, and then afterwards we'll move on to what you guys want to see. So if you have an Episto that you've been having trouble with, um, or you can't breed it or keep it for whatever reason, uh, they keep dying on you or something, uh, put that Episto in the comments section, and if it comes up enough, I'll probably put it in the next video. Uh, so without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so this week I wanted to talk about probably one of the most visually stunning Epistogramma species that I own um, and that just exists in general, and that's Epistogramma atawapa. Um, we're going to go ahead and talk about its origins, kind of like in the last video. We're going to talk about a rough description, uh, its spawning habits and what you're going to need to do for that, and then uh, we'll go ahead and conclude. Uh, so I'm just going to take a sip here real quick. Okay, so Epistogramma atawapa, or A175, is typically found in small blackwater streams uh, located off the Rio Italia or the Rio Nene rivers. Uh, water parameters from these streams usually consist of a low pH hovering between 3.0 and 5.0. Uh, so we're looking at a very, or extremely soft water, uh, acidic water fish, um, as is the case with most Episto species. Uh, TDS is not very high if existent at all, um, and typically the nitrogen cycle parameters are all within their reasonable values, um, just because there's so much surface area for bacteria to grow on. Uh, so these backwater streams are also very um, dimly lit, and they have a very uh, low current to them, so they don't move very much. Uh, so you're going to want to recreate this in your home aquarium. Um, Typical dither species that you're going to find with Pisgram atawapa are going to be uh, fish from this uh, family's Copia, Copina, and then uh, Nanostoma species, so your pencil fish. And pencil fish are great fish uh, for dithers, just for any Episto in general. Uh, so now let's go ahead and move on to uh, a rough description of Pisgram atawapa, or the sunset Episto as it's sometimes called. Um, this fish exhibits a lot of sexual dimorphism, meaning that you can really tell the males and the females apart uh, just by uh, giving them kind of a glance over. At least in adult fish, younger fish you might have a little bit more trouble, uh, but in adult fish they're generally really easy to distinguish between male and female. Uh, so males are larger, have very impressive dorsal rays, with typically the third and the fourth dorsal ray being the highest. Um, and they show a variety of yellows, blues, oranges, uh, maybe a little shimmer of green every once in a while, um, and some browns in there uh, dashed in also. Uh, females are smaller. They don't have the dorsal finish that males do. Uh, they exhibit much of the same color patterns. However, it's really the breeding dress that sets the Epistogramma atawapa females off and then sets them apart from a lot of the other female Epistogrammas, in my opinion. Uh, with other female Epistos, you typically get that yellow golden breeding dress with a black dot, black stripes um, going on. But with the female Atawapa, you get a white uh, frosted tips along the top of her dorsal rays. Um, and I think that's really interesting. Uh, you don't see a, a lot of that in other female Epistos breeding dresses. Uh, so maybe that's one more reason why I love this fish so much. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get up, we're going to grab the camera, and we're going to go ahead and look at my pair and talk a little bit more about this fish. Okay guys, so here we are looking at uh, my Pistogram Atawapa tank. 
Uh, I just flipped the lights on so they're not showing that much coloration right now. But we're going to go ahead and continue with the rest of what I have planned for this video. Uh, the male is behind her, back there, behind the, the uh, pot that she's in. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about how to keep this fish in the home aquarium. Uh, so, at home you want to have at least a minimum of 20 gallons for this fish. Um, more experienced hobbyists can kind of get away with a little bit smaller tanks, uh, like I keep mine in. Um, however, if you've never kept this fish before, uh, a 20 gallon long is really going to be your starting point. And I think oh, my mail just came out at the bottom. Um, so a Pisagrama atawapa can be quite aggressive, especially during spawning. So a partition tank with plenty of leaves, plants, botanicals, uh, and other decor, decor is really required. Uh, your general tank parameters should consist of your usual zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and under 40 parts per million nitrates. Um, however, uh, the closer to zero with the nitrates, the better. Uh, your pH can be anywhere between 3.0 to 7.0. However, lower is better again. Uh, a cage between zero and three is recommended. Um, and a TDS should be very low or non-existent um, in general. Uh, RDUI water is really great for these fish because you can build uh, your water how they need it to be. So you can really do a good job of replicating uh, their natural environment uh, super well. So in the wild, these fish have been found in streams with a temperature between 26 and 32 degrees Celsius. Uh, if you don't know how to work Celsius, that's 78 degrees to about 88, 89 degrees. Um, However, if you keep them in about 78 to 82, you're going to be doing a good job. Uh, just keep in mind that any degree over 78 degrees, you're probably going to end up producing more uh, males. And any degree under 78 degrees, you're probably going to get more females. So temperature really can affect uh, the sex ratio that you have in your spawns. Um, sand, as with most epistos, is also a must. Uh, for this epistogramma uh, because they're technically a form of earth eater uh, so they're related to geophagus and other fish like that um, so they're going to be sifting through your sand and stuff like that so even though i have a primarily bare bottom tank i have thrown some sand in there that they can pick at um, and pull food particles from now when you want to breed epistogramma at a wapa um, it's not very difficult in my experience if you provide them the right conditions so a constant temperature between 78 and 82 degrees, as I alluded to earlier, will help induce spawning. However, keep in mind, as I said before, that the higher the temperature over 78 will give you more males, and the lower the temperature under 78 will give you uh, more females. And I don't know what was going on with the top of the camera there, so sorry about that. Um, also, uh, low pH is required. I've bred them in 5.5. Um, but I hear lower is uh, even more successful with this fish. Um, so you can kind of experiment around and see what works for you, but you probably are going to have better luck spawning this fish in a lower pH. Uh, your KH and TDS are more important, in my opinion, than, uh, than your pH. And if you keep a stable KH, TDS, um, and just generally balanced nitrogen cycle, your pH should fall in line relatively well. Uh, Obviously, live foods are going to be best to induce spawning. Uh, so, black worms, live blood worms, maybe cut up, um, and things like that are going to work. If you don't have access to live foods, frozen foods work just as well. Um, and just a general healthy and varied diet will help induce spawning for this fish. Uh, parental care is more or less the same as with all the other pisto species. The female takes care of the fry, male kind of uh, sits around the outskirts of the. Uh, female and kind of protects them um, or he might try to eat them depends on uh, the individual fish that you have uh, so we're gonna go ahead and start wrapping it up here uh, I just kind of want to leave you guys with a couple parting notes and then we'll end this video uh, so Pissagram at Awapa is an extremely beautiful and rewarding fish to keep and I highly recommend doing so uh, do keep in mind that this fish um, needs as close to a natural environment as possible uh, so recreating this in your home aquarium is going to be really important uh, water chemistry is super important so be sure to know what's in your water before attempting to keep this fish as well uh, so I hope you all enjoyed this episode of the week episode and if you liked liked it 
please give it a thumbs up, comment with what you'd like to see in a future episode, and of course, share and, and subscribe to my channel. With that said, I'm Nate with 7 Run Aquatics, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.